we wanted to hop on and do this video because we were having a really good conversation about men about proposals and we were really just going back through our proposal journey and it posed a conversation that talked about why a lot of men are hesitant to propose and so i just wanted to get on here and have that question or excuse me have that conversation live with my fiance who is a man who gives a lot of really good male perspectives if you haven't looked at his male videos or his what is it men truth about men videos Truth from a male perspective. Truth from a male perspective. Check those out playlists. The playlist, yo. Look at those videos, but babe, mm -hmm. why, why, why the men don't be popping the question? There are all these single women who are either single or are in relationships for ten thousand years, and right, this is right. your. This is, hold on, this, if you are in a relationship for five years, and this is my females, and you don't know where you're going, there's been no conversations about marriage, all that stuff. It's time to get out. Time Go ahead. To get up out of there. But uh, the reason why I feel like men are so uh, scared to pop the question is because of uncertainty. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's you got to think about. It. Look at the world we live in today. Um, there are some women who, as soon as they see money, you can just go to the left. There are some people that may get a better these days. Women are the most educated people in the world, especially African American women, and so. Y'all have the same jobs that men have and even make more money than us, which is no problem at all for some men, even like myself. But at the same time, for some men, they didn't come from that type of household. So they're not ready for that. They're not used to that. So they're so, not ready for a woman to be. They're not ready for a woman to be a boss like I got, a mm. CEO like I have. A lot of men are not ready for that. A lot of men are really scared to allow a woman to even be in a household that make more money than them. Because sometimes you have to deal with women who may... I make more money than you, so you have to do this, you have to do this. But when you have a loving wife and a caring wife, she's not going to treat you like that. She's still going to make sure that you are known to be the man. See, that's the problem. The thing about men with our ego, like I was telling my wife, it comes with submission. The Bible says you must submit. Oh, you and sound men... so passionate. <laughs> you sound that passionate. And when you sub but, but to be honest, when you submit, when you submit as a woman to your man, as God has called you, and only submit to the man that God has called you, mm -hmm. that's another thing. That Do not be submitting to all these men out here because that is wrong. Only submit to the man that God has called your you. Your husband. Period. Exactly, which is your husband. And if you submit to your husband, I promise you, once you make that man feel like a man, and once that man understands that he is a man, and you take the, that off of your mindset of a woman that, okay, I don't want to give, I don't want to toot his horn. No, you need to toot his horn. I promise you, he would do everything mm -hmm. in his power to make sure you'd be happy. Because his job in the Bible is to understand you and to have patience with you. So that's why some men are really scared. It wait, is, you know? wait, but what about, you talked about a lot of women who mm -hmm. are quote unquote bosses. And I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of women are. But what about those women who are soft and delicate and have been, you know, in these relationships for four plus years and their man is like you know i just i just don't know or my finances need to get together or the second I, reason, all man, these things a man sometimes is scared to be a man mm. a man is scared to be a man and when a man does not feel like he's a man he's not ready to pop the question because he doesn't want to get hurt see it's sad to say woman you almost succumb to being hurt um Y'all have women to talk to. Y'all have people that you can get the hurt out. But see, with men, we hold so much hurt in. So we run away from even taking a chance to win or to lose. We want to make sure we're going to win in every situation. And we know we're going to win if we have everything in order. But mm. men, I'm telling you and I'm sure to you, you're missing out on your blessing. You're missing out on your blessing, which is your wife, which is the person who will bring you favor, which is the person who was made from your rib which is the person that God has made for you to propel you to that next level. You're missing out on her because you feel that you're not at the point that you need to be at. But see, when you find your wife, one thing I tell T that I love about her, out of every woman I ever met, the one thing she told me, which I will never forget, I love you for the person you are now, even if you don't change. And when you find a woman who loves you for who you are now, then you're going to, like, that's how you know you got church. Mm. Because she don't love you for where you're going. No, I love you for where you're at now. And even if you don't improve, uh, I'm still going to love you. Because you as a woman should know, if he doesn't improve and he's with you, that's your fault. And if you don't improve and you with him, that's his fault. Because we're the helper. Y'all the helper. You're supposed to help me get to this next level. Ooh. It's not necessary. That's just what the Bible says. That's what I'm going to say. Talk about it. One thing that I 
I think I mentioned this on another video, mm -hmm. but something that someone told me like early on when I, not even before I was even dating Nathaniel, they said, you should always be able, she said, a true woman, a wise woman is able to spot out a king in diapers. Mm. I'll repeat that again. A wise woman is able That's to good. spot out a king That's in good. diapers. So what does that mean? So you have a lot of these men who are single, who don't have wives, who don't have their helpmates with mm -hmm. them. And they're just at like the, there's so much more that they need to grow into, so much more that they need to do. But the reality is, and a lot of women, they want men to already be put together, already be established. And that's not to say just settle for any project, because I'm definitely not saying that at all. But what right. I'm saying is when you get connected with your God ordained spouse, there's a certain level that that man is going to go to that's going to far surpass where he was when you were with him. That's why when Nate or when you guys first met, that's why when Nate said when you don't. When your husband doesn't excel when you guys are together, that's literally your fault. If we are called to be the helpmate, that means our sole function in our man's life is to help them succeed, is to help them fulfill their purpose, is to help them literally accomplish the, the dreams, the goals, the visions that God has placed over their life, is to help them obtain their maximum potential. And so if we aren't doing that, if we're constantly so caught up in like, no, he needs to have this, he needs to have that, we don't have this, he don't have that. And again, I'm not saying go out for a project, please. Do not go out for these broke down, no. raggedy, you know, trifling dudes. But hold up. To the raggedy, broke down, trifling dudes, that's true. Don't go after them. But remember, you still got to pray because you never know that raggedy, broke down dude may be your husband. And in three or four Lord. years, that may be your man that he changed your life. The reason I say that, I came from a, a low income area. I came from a poverty area myself. I came from the hood myself. But I've changed into the man that I am now. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would not have been with me, the person I was about four or five years ago, but I've excelled. So you always, I'm not saying you go after that man right there. No, no, no. But I'm saying sometimes what we do as women, sometimes what y'all do, y'all block yourself off of y'all blessing because you put the picture of the man that you want. But God said, I already knew the man who I made for you. I already, hey, in the belly when I found him, you came from out his rib. So the man that's for you, I already know him. You don't know him yet. He's going to come find you. So when you go closer to God, God will reveal that man to you. So all that I'm going to say is you're right. Bay is so right. Do not, when that man at, at his spot, he, that's his season. You need to leave him there because guess what? That's a season that God is with him. That's a season that God can do what God's going to do. That's a season that God can show his glory. That's a season that God can show his faith in that man. That's a season that God can... Grow that man spiritually, mentally, physically, in all type of ways, and even emotionally. Because, see, when a man's at that point, a man can't do nothing else but call on a guy. Mm -hmm. So once he gets to that point, now he's ready to go to that next level. So that's just a little hitter. But one thing I'm going to say, one thing I'm going to say, one thing I'm going to say, one thing I'm going to say. My wife does say you're right. Y'all are supposed to be the helper. But it's not supposed to be all that on your shoulders. Understand that. You Same are help. It, just in case. Y'all are the helper. But it's not all on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. Understand, she's supposed to help you get to this next level. But guess what? Your help woman is not just what you know. It's also God. Mm -hmm. Draw closer to God and let God, hey, God, I need my man to excel in this area. I need him to stop the procrastination. Ooh. I need him to stop the laziness. Talk to him. Let me tell you something. Anytime you know Nathaniel's cutting up, you do think I have to yell at him at all? No, 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 no. I be going to God. First of all, God, you gave me this man, okay? So I need you to deal with him, and I need you to fix whatever it is that we got going on. And I kid you, every single time, like clockwork, and you wouldn't even know because I'd be talking to God. But every single time, like clockwork, I'll either get a phone call, mm -hmm. my bad, boo, I was, like, reading into that too deeply, or my bad, I shouldn't have said it like that. And, like, it's when you, when you take things or matters out of your own hands and literally cast all burdens, cast your cares, mm -hmm. cast things to God, He'll direct you better than you ever could. And I that makes me think about what about, you know, is there a lot of women try to like force engagement on men mm -hmm. or they'll try to force a man to propose. And so what what does that do for men? Because I've I've, I've experienced like sometimes it works. Honestly, and sometimes it's this like gym, ladies, this is nah, a gym. don't do it. Check me out. This is the gym. A man will never marry something that doesn't challenge him. A man will never go after something that doesn't challenge him. 
if it does not challenge him. So if it's easy for him and he goes after it, he's going to misuse it. He's going to abuse it. It's too easy. Okay, cool. You want me this bad? I'm going to let you sit over here in this corner. I'm going to still do my thing on that side. But see, when you tell that man no, and when you show that man your worth, he will drop every single woman just to be with them because mm -hmm. a man does not like the word no. Understand that. So you must be the challenge for him. You can't just be so easy, but you can't be so hard. You have to find a fine line. Be very firm, firm in your boundaries, but also be more, even better and more stronger in your prayer walk. Trust me, you have to give the man a challenge. That's another reason why men don't want to marry women, because you're not a challenge. If you're so easy, if you, I can just get it from you just like this, you go take care of me, you go do all this, and I can just come over there and lay up and you cook with me and do this and I can talk to you when I want to, you're not presenting me a challenge. So do you think women should give men that they're dating an ultimatum? Like, okay, listen, you got two months to propose nah. to me and if you don't propose to me in two months, to the loop. I a mean, that's a challenge. A ultim that's not necessarily a challenge. That's an ultimatum. So when you do that as a woman, you take God out the picture. Because, see, you don't give a man a time limit that he got this much time. You can have your own time limit in your head. If your time limit is two minutes, you want to move, that's fine. But sometimes you'll find yourself, you may move quick. You may move from something that's supposed to be yours. You know what I'm saying? God will always redirect you. But sometimes you move from something that's supposed to be yours when you place a time limit on it. God does not move on your time. God moves on his time. If you say, God, if this is my man, show me, God will show you. If you say, God, if this is my man, remove him. If this is not my man, remove him. God will remove him. Reason I say that, I told myself I used to have a two year a two year plan. So any female I was with, I'd be with for two years. I'd be like, I'm gonna just, if I can't make it, if I can't make it to that second, and it wasn't the fact that yo, it wasn't we couldn't we would the, the situation wasn't good. It's just the fact that within them two years, if I didn't marry you, then I'm like, you know what, you just not the one. But see, when I found out. That I put, I took the time limit off and I said, God usher my wife into my life. And when you do that, when I met Tiara, she would tell you, and we would let you guys know, we got a, a lot of things to let you guys know, but we would let you know we were on a fast together. And on that fast, I said, God, this was in our first month and a half being together. I said, God, if this is my wife, after this fast, may she still be here. And if this is not my wife, cut it. That was my prayer. It was And I'm still point. here. And so sometimes. Is. Okay. As Sometime, woman, I'm going to just challenge you. Pray serious prayers and mean what you pray. Mm -hmm. Say, God, if this is my man, keep him here. God, if this is not my man, keep him here. Don't put no time limit on it. Because, see, when you put a time limit on it, then a devil also going to be like, okay, yeah, she got a time limit. Let me come do my work. Yeah, because you, you also. Got, yeah, let God do his work. Don't do God work for him. You also never know the type of grooming or pruning that God may try to get through, through the man or through mm -hmm. the woman. And so imagine, like, I, the way that I view God, and I know God views me, like, God views me as the apple of his eye. So he's not about to just give me some raggedy project to work on. And even if they may be my husband, because God loves me so much, he's like, nah, I don't want you to experience him in this way right now. Like, just chill a little bit, keep praying, keep increasing intimacy with me, keep following your purpose, keep, you know, handling business, keep doing those things. And when the time is right, I will bring him to you. And even in that state, like I mentioned before, they won't be perfect. There, there, there is, there is no say, such one, thing as a perfect one thing. man. One thing I'm going to say, the one thing I'm going to say, sorry, to everybody, one thing I'm going to say, woman, take off the wants that you want your man to be and place the need that God need for you, for your man to be. Take off mm -hmm. your wants and replace them with the needs that God wants. Sometimes your wants is the reason why you don't have the man you, that's for you and don't, that you do not have your husband yet because you place a want. He has to be six, seven. He has to be strong. He has to be a software engineer. Well, let me finish. He has to be this and that. But see, the thing about that is that that's your want. But True. God knows what you need. And I'm not saying that God won't give you that six, seven man, this software engineer, this and that. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that God knows what you need. And he's going to give you what you need. Understand that. Because, see, when I give you what you need, oh, he's going to challenge you as well, woman. Oh, yeah. He's going to bring out oh, some yeah. things in you that you never knew that was in you. But when you sit back and you look at the situation, we can both attest to this. 
you learn so much from the other person. You learn so much from the other person. When you take out the fuss and you sit back and realize, well, he's saying something that's really true. Or she is saying something that's really true. And then you will see how you just become better in that way. And see, once you do that, now God can do what he needs to do in y'all life together. That's all I'm going to say. You know, that makes me think about, and I think a lot of women and men, or just people in general, don't understand how like spiritual marriage Mm -hmm. and engagement, all of those things are. And there's so much like preparation from a Mm -hmm. prayer and study stance that really needs to be applied when you're you know you're ready for marriage when you're dating that man when you're you know in the even engagement process and i say that because i remember when i first started dating nate god used to speak to me so much and god said something like very clear even about like his growth his development he was like hey you know nate may be a little rough around the edges but that's your dude, and here's what he's going to become. Something like something like something as simple as that. Nine and one uptown New Orleans. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> but he said those things, and immediately I just went into prayer concerning his future, mm-hmm. concerning where we were. And in that time, I just began to have so many dreams about his future. God even gave me dreams about him proposing. Like even I even think leading up to the week, I got actually got engaged. I had a dream that I got engaged. And God speaks to a lot of us about, about dreams. But I think this goes back to like what you were saying with letting God handle the the outer work. Like, let's say you're in a relationship and you're constantly like, hey, yo, bruh, I need a ring and I need a ring today. No, don't. First of all, the fact that you got to force somebody to do anything. Uh-uh. That's that's already mm-mm. that's already an issue. But what I will say is. When she'll be like, oh, OK, God. I truly believe that this is the man that you gave me. Mm -hmm. I need you to quicken his feet if it is indeed the divine time. If there is something that's fighting us from a spiritual stance, from a demonic stance that's hindering him from proposing, oh God, you got to X him out because of your love for me. And you know what that thing might be? Sometimes it's not the fact that the man is taking, sometimes it's just not the fact that the man is taking on to propose to you. Sometimes it's God protecting you from what you don't even know. So sometimes Mm -hmm. God is, he has to build him up before he can make that decision. Because like you say, it's very spiritual. It's very, very spiritual. It's very, very spiritual. Sometimes the man still may be attached to the outward beauty and don't have the inner beauty. But God, his word says what? Don't worry about what's outside because that will fade away. Only worry about what's inside. So let's say you do marry a man who's like, I'm just marrying him for outside. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get him to finally love you inside. Mm-hmm. But see, God may be like, let me correct his eyes right now. Let me correct his eye gates and his ear gates. Let me correct what he hear, the words that come out of his mouth, the things that he see. So when he sees you, he don't even see this. He loves you from what's inside. And what's inside, it makes your outside even shine brighter. Mm. God protects us before we make decisions. So even though it took me time and it took Sierra time for us to find each other, true. And it's funny because we knew each other like in what, 2017? Like somebody told us about what that was, 2017? No, I think that was 18. It was either 2017 or 18. Somebody told us about each other. Now it's 23. It's 24. And we proposed to each other in 2023. I didn't propose to you. Oh, I proposed to her in 2023. Because I will mop the Pacific Ocean <laughs> before I propose to anybody's son. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't propose to no man, lady. Don't, don't, you don't need to get on Wait, job. we have a question. But let me finish my oh, sorry, spiritual man for So let's say this, it's a spirit thing, y'all. It's a very spirit thing. You have to understand that if this relationship is what God has called you to do, then this relationship must glorify God. Mm-hmm. Then it's the three P's that must be in place before you get that ring. Three P's equal that final P. That final P is to propose. Mm-hmm. But before the proposal, you must pray. You must be praying as a female. He must be praying as a male. You must both be in his presence. I remember before I even proposed to her, that's the closest I got with God in my life. I even mm. re- got rebaptized be- the week before I proposed to her because I wanted to wash all my sins away. I wanted to get back a deeper connection with God. I said, God, this time when I go in that water and all these sins go away, I will be a new man and live for you and live for you only. Mm. So my, me and my wife, we can glorify you. And the reason, and the last part, is patience. And seeing patience. When you be patient with God, you pray, you be in his presence and patience, then that proposal will come. It's very, very, very spiritual. Wait. Very so, spiritual. So my question 
goes back to like what I was saying before. There are men who take quote unquote too long. And would you, mm. women I know need security. And mm. so what, like, what mm, advice you. do you give to, I don't I know, women you. who are like, listen, I've been in this relationship for, th- for three years and they're still no ring. Like, All right, what do say, I do? I'm going to give advice to my men first, to my men, to my men. Hey, if you don't know, don't go. <laughs> you be having a laugh. You like that? 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 <laughs> if you don't know, don't go. <laughs> so what I'm saying with that is, if you don't know, then it's not nine times out of ten, bro, that she's not the one. Mm-hmm. Because when you find the one, you will know. It's something about the one that stands out. Mm-hmm. It's something about the one that is like. Ah, this is a different feeling. I don't even, it's something about the one that she don't even worry about the outside. You just worry about her inner side. Mm-hmm. It's something about the one that you even think about. Hey, I want to know her mindset. What she think, what she feel, the things she like. More than how she looks when she in this and when she in that. Now, granted, you want something that look nice. But one thing a past even told me, hey, God go make, you don't think God go take care of you? You don't think God go take care of you as a man? If you truly a child, you think God said, I'm going to just give you this person who look like this. No, no, no. If you're God's child, God loves you. God wants you to be happy. He know you won't. But see, he wants you to want him more than her. Mm. And the reason why marriages don't go. Now, before I go to the woman, this is the in-between. The reason why marriages do not go forward. The reason why marriages do not happen. Because when I bring you the man, you forget about me. When I bring you the woman, you forget about God. When I bring you the man, you forget about God. That is the problem. We forget about God when we get our person and we focus so much on our person and what we do. Now that person has became an idol. And see, one thing God said he does not want is you to be an idol because you can't worship two people. Some men will get the woman of his dreams and give her everything in the world. Some woman will get the man of her dreams and take care of him, talk about have sex with him, do this for him. Baby, I'm a cook. She never cooked a day in her life. She was cooking hamburger helper. This girl done got her a meal. Yeah, man. Just because buddy look good. Oh, girl, he in the NBA, girl. Don't Miss make it. him hamburger you know helper, saying? please. Please do not make no hamburger <laughs> helpers, all right? All right. <laughs> to my woman. Um, reason why sometimes things take so late and take so much time, because God truly loves y'all. He loves his men, but he loves y'all his girls. Three years though. Listen, y'all. I don't girls. know about that, babe. Listen, y'all his girls, and I'm not saying sit in a relationship for three, four, five years. I'm not saying that at all, because see, if you truly have that worth, even I'm not saying you must challenge that man. Hey, mm-hmm. we can still be friends, but we don't need to be in a relationship. I'm in a relationship with God. I want you to come to me when you're ready to marry me. That's the issue. We want to get into a relationship and then be like, you know what? Yeah, I want to be in a relationship for two, three years, and you finally gonna marry me. He just been, he just was like, you know what? Well, now this was happening. You excelling, you got an MBA, you a doctor, and he been sitting there for three, four years. You been he like, bro, might as well just go and do it. I can't beat it. And what's gonna happen is I will have turmoil on your marriage and later. I promise you that. Do you think that th- that the man and the woman should have the conversation about expectations and timeline? Like, okay. I know, and I know for you and I, when we started dating, I used to be like, okay, like we could get together, but what's what's the angle? And yeah. you was like, well, yeah, I'm it's trying a to It's a way, to, it's, a way so. to, it's a way to bring it. It's a way to bring it. And one thing a man told me, one thing I heard, and I'm not even going to say his name because a lot of people don't like him. I'm not going to say his name. I already know who. <laughs> but one thing I will never forget that he said, he said, as a man, if you find a woman and you take on a date, and then you take on another date, and then you take on another date, and then you waste your money, and you don't end up being with her. It's your fault because you didn't ask the correct questions on the first date. If you're with a person with an hour, you should always have your non-negotiable questions, and you should know how to use And this is the thing about the non-negotiables. Mm-hmm. Sometimes women, sometimes men, we got to ease up on how we bring it. Sometimes you make it like, Tierra, I'm, I'm very blunt. I'm from, I'm from the South. I'm blunt. She from up north. They not that blunt. You know, and so I had to learn to ease up the I'm way I bring brain. flower. Right. She's a delicate flower. <laughs> I had to learn to ease up the way I bring my approach to her. So sometimes what you're not a ghost was, I'm not saying don't, no, don't be stern, but, you know, the questions that you have, but you got to be very easy 
in the way that you bring it. You think we'd be too aggressive? Like, uh uh. If you don't love God, if you got too many kids, if you don't make a hundred plus K, uh uh. Sometimes, woman, you only need to ask your non negotiable. Sometimes he'll tell him. Trust mm -hmm. me, if you go into that date, Just watch. go to the date and pray. Before you go into the date, you should be in prayer. God, if this is not mine, That's let true. me get everything I need. That's true. You're not even going to have to ask the questions. God going to let that every, I That's promise true. you, everything you need, he will speak out of his mouth. And he is the man. I never forget, I want a date. I want a blind date. I never want a blind date. My homegirl sent me on a blind date. And she'll laugh when she sees this video. She want a blind date. I'm like, all right, cool. I left the blind date like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she looked it good. She was educated. She wasn't that cute. She was everything. She didn't look like this thing. She like wasn't that cute. But at the same time, um, the moral of the story is I asked the right questions. And I and God, and some questions I didn't even have to ask. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They was answered for me. Wait, that makes me so I also think about like why oftentimes men wait so long and from a woman's perspective and this is just me going based off of like experience and conversations that i've had with other women we oftentimes give these men everything and that they have nothing to work for for instance like you just said men like challenges if i'm over here having sex with you if i'm over here cooking you meals every day if i'm over here we're living together if i'm over here you know picking Picking, you know, little Johnny up. If I'm literally playing the wifely role without the wifely title, what's the purpose of me having the wifely role? What's the purpose of him popping the question when I'm already getting all of the benefits that I would if I had the ring without the ring? So that, I would say this, though, too, coming from the male perspective. You're right. Sometimes you guys do give too many benefits. Wait, wait, wait. But really the quick. thing is, okay. though, the thing is, though, you must understand that the only benefit that you really should hold back is what's in between your legs and kissing. Um, it's not an issue that if you decide to cook a meal for a guy who you've been dating for a while and that you know that guy and say, you know what, this may be a decent guy. It's, it, that's fine. Now, he doesn't have to come to your crib or this and that, or y'all can be like, you may invite him to an event, but you got to be very particular on how you move. Certain things, like you said, you should not do, but you still, the, this is another reason why we miss out on a husband. Because what the problem is, we don't present ourselves as a wife. And then you want the man to marry a girlfriend when he's looking for a wife. And you mad he's not with you because you have not showed yourself to be a wife. As a man, you don't want to as a woman, you don't just want to marry a boyfriend. You want a man who's already a husband. But he has to show himself to be a husband. Before I met Tierra, I told myself, yo, I need to move like a husband. And then God ushered my wife. So always remember, it's a fine line in between what a girlfriend does and what a wife does. It is. Because if you hold out the sex, and if you hold out the kissing, and if you hold out the fan at night, and you hold out all the other stuff. You still must show that you're a wife mm -hmm. before that man to give you that ring. And absolutely. that's the last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to let Tia wrap up this video. Yeah, absolutely. And I even think, like, going back to what I was saying before, you're doing all of these things. And now you're not just doing these things, but you're doing things that don't glorify God, which means that you now have placed this relationship in idol. Before the man, you were reading You were reading your word. Before the man, you were praying every day. Before the man, you were going to church and going to fellowships and doing X, Y, and Z. And don't get it twisted. I definitely understand times and seasons things change. But regardless of who's in the picture, you should never not make sure that God has, has, has his priority spot as number one and then every single thing else that falls behind it. One thing I've heard from a woman of God, she said, an idol is anything that goes against the word of God. An idol is anything that you, oh, excuse me, no, an idol is anything that you love more than your obedience to God. So going again, really related, we're pertaining to sex, but you, in God's word, it says don't have sex. And we got all the scriptures in the Bible to pull it up. I know a lot of people will be like, uh -uh, I don't know. No. It says abstain from sexual sin. It says that. And it, it says to stay away from sexual and sin. And it talks about mm -hmm. not just abstaining from sexual sin, but the reasons why. It mm -hmm. literally talks about, I think it's Psalms 5. It talks about how stay away from sexual sin or else you're going to be filled with diseases or else your body's going to be consumed with like all sorts of diseases. So that's a form of protection. But I, oh, I go back to say or I say all that to say we we're doing every single thing that we that we are doing, whether it's like cooking, cleaning and make, holding that wifely role for a man who hasn't who we haven't necessarily required him to level up in the area of proposing. And I think what we can do in our next video is kind of talk about 
our engagement process and some of the things that were going on in your brain before you know you proposed and things of that sort. Definitely do that, man. It's a pleasure having you with us today. We appreciate y'all. Y'all make sure y'all like, y'all make sure y'all comment, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. We love all y'all who support us. Keep supporting us. God is definitely speaking through us and God is with us in everything that we're doing. Thank y'all, man. Y'all be blessed, man. Squall family out.